Hey YouTube, Alex here, and in today's video I wanted to go over the Vivarium Electronics VE200 thermostat. In my opinion, even though I'm definitely very biased as somebody who primarily uses the Herbstat products by Spider Robotics, I never really understood the drama between people who fight over which is best, because if I'm gonna be honest with all of y'all watching, I have used both. Currently, I'm not using this thermostat just because most of my stuff is run by Herbstats. However, I have hatched Chinese water dragon eggs with this exact thermostat. I have used this brand of thermostat at previous jobs of mine. I've hatched ball pythons with it, corn snakes with this thermostat. We actually had one set up during my internship in 2021 that ran a pro products heat panel with a big blood python in it. So again, drama aside, I've used both. I personally prefer herb stats, but it doesn't mean I don't use these. I still like to have this on hand as a backup. And the biggest issue that I personally have with the product is that this, <laughs> see the website for the owner's manual. Their website does not work. I have no idea how long their website has not been working, but I have never been able to find a vivariumelectronics.com. So if you want to find some information on the product, I will leave a link somewhere down here and I'll quickly uh, throw up a screen recording. Go to Reptile Basics website. Reptile Basics is the company that owns the Vivarium Electronics brand. Um, so, you know, I buy all my shipping boxes from them for whenever I'm uh, shipping out captive bred water dragons and lizards to uh, my customers. So thanks, Rich and the whole team over at Reptile Basics. And with that in mind, because of how they simply have the options of what their different thermostat models do, I've never really seen a full on tutorial video with setup of this product. And since I've used this in the past between my jobs and again, uh, running my incubator with this thermostat, I figured I would do a really quick setup video for y'all. So to get started, when you get your thermostat, you note this is the VE200. So there are three models to my knowledge. There are four models. There is the VE100, which is a standard on and off thermostat. The VE200 and the VE300 allow for dimming and pulse proportional heating. If you want to know the difference between those two heating methods, click the card right up here. I did an entire video where I showed this thermostat on an incubator. I showed you some herp stats and I showed you the different heating products that you would use with a dimming thermostat versus a pulse proportional thermostat. So check that video out first if you want to know what type of heating mode you should use and then come back and watch this video if you're using a VE200 thermostat. So when you get this product, you get the thermostat, you will get the power cord for it. So there is your plug-in. This is what goes into the thermostat and then you will get a thermostat probe. So this is the end of the probe that connects to the thermostat. And then the end of the probe, which will go inside your enclosure, inside your incubator, on your heat tape, wherever you're using it, this is the tip of the probe. So to get started, I suggest plugging everything in first before you plug your thermostat into an electrical outlet. So we're gonna flip this around real quick. We are going to put in our power cable. and then we are going to put the probe in the slot that says probe. Notice how there are two different icons. So this that says probe is where you put your thermostat probe. For the VE100 and the VE200, the night drop setting you have to buy from a separate module. Now, if you are watching this video and you have a VE300, you will not need a separate night drop module because the VE300 comes with a built-in night drop feature. I'm not going to talk about it in this video because we're talking about the VE200, but if you would like to see me do a video on the VE300, I'd be more than happy to make one. Let me know in the comments. And if you're liking this video so far, please leave a like. So the probe, you literally just connect that in there. It'll click in, and so if you have to remove it, you just gently pull down on this tab and it pops right out. So, lastly, for the sake of the video example, we will be putting in our heat source. So this is the one thing that can be kind of confusing because this says AC out. If I'm gonna be totally honest with you, I have no idea what that means. 
I just know that based on the thermostat setup, this is where you wanna put your heat source. So for today's video, I just have a heat pad on the table by Zoomed, and that is what we're going to be setting up as our heat source. So you'll just plug in your heat source, be it your heat pad, the heat tape on your snake rack, the heating device on your incubator, and I'll quickly dive into possibly how you could use this to control lights. Though with the VE models, I'm not the biggest fan of using physical lights as a, uh, a heat source, and we'll discuss that later. So we've got everything plugged in, and now we're going to plug our thermostat into an electrical outlet, which I've just got over here. Bam, your LED light's gonna go on. So right now, oh man, this still has all of my default settings. It is currently set to 83 degrees Fahrenheit because that is what I used to have my incubator set to when I had this thermostat on there. So if you are running this with a heat pad, here is my ZoomEd heat pad. We are literally going to take the probe and we would tape it down on the heat pad as it applies electricity. So to get started on the menu options with this, if you click the enter button and the menu button, it will take you to how you can set your daytime temperature, night drop amount if you have a night drop model. And for reference, if I click enter on this, the night drop module is not present. So then it'll just return you back to the menu. Now it says entry accepted and you go back. It doesn't matter which order you click these. So if I say, let's see, set daytime temperature and I click down, it'll say night drop amount. And if I try to go back up, it'll take you to set time of day. It does not matter which button you press because the menu is just gonna roll through the same thing over and over again. So in this case, I am filming this at, let's see, where's my nearest clock? It is currently 3.11 p.m. So you will set your hours, and that way you can just know what time it is. With this thermostat, you can't unfortunately um, set like a night drop based on the clock without the night drop mat module present. There. So what you'll see now is if we exit the menu we'll just leave it alone for a second you'll remember the clock was blinking because the clock wasn't set and now it says our current time so pretty neat and nifty if you ask me the other thing that we can do then is if we click menu we can set our daytime let's pretend we're using this you know 90 degrees is a pretty common temperature it's like the hot spot for ball pythons the heat tape you just click enter your mode gets accepted and again, if we wait, now what we will see is the probe is reading 76 degrees. I put it under the heat mat. We are The SP means set probe, like the, the probe is set to 90 degrees and the probe is currently reading 76 and that'll go up. What does this light mean? So you might've seen the light was blinking earlier. That means it is going on a pulse proportional mode. And so if we want to change between pulse proportional and dimming, all we have to do is go into the menu again and we click on heating mode. Pulse, dim, on off, the VE200 does have that capability, or dimming. So you just pick which mode you want. So in this case for a heat pad, I'm going to be using pulse because this is a VE stat. You could use pulse for a VE heat panel. In the case of dimming though, so if we click on dimming, what this means is that now the thermostat is going to adjust power. So I'm gonna cover the light here. And what you can see is it's gonna tell you exactly how much power is being applied. So now the light is running at 10% power and it's slowly going to ramp it up. Personally, with the VE stats, from what I understand, they design these primarily for running them with the pulse proportional thermostat, but you can see that light gives you an indication of how much power is running. And so it's, since it's 77 degrees, it's going to ramp up the heat mat until it gets to full power. So where does this differ if you are using a heat light as a heat source? We're gonna quickly unplug our heat pad. Now we're gonna throw a heat lamp into equation. This is just one of my spare Zilla mini halogens. We're gonna plug it in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reset the dimming mode real quick, I just hit menu. So now you can see the light is running at 90% power, 94% power. So if we put our probe right under the light, the probe is gonna heat up. And what you're gonna see is once it hits 90 degrees, 
the light is going to start dimming and so will the thermostat. So right now the thermostat is running this light at 100% power and the probe is heating up. It's literally heating up within seconds. It's 86 degrees, 87. I'm trying not to burn the tip of my fingers here, but I want you all to see. So now that it's 90, look at how the percent of power is going down. 93%, 95, right? Because the probe's heating up and then once it gets above a certain temperature, it just shuts the light off entirely. So this is why I'm not a big fan of the dimming mode for heat lights, because as you can imagine, if you've got a basking species that relies on daylight, be it a bearded dragon, a Chinese water dragon, I know a lot of you guys watch my channel for that. Uh, that is why. So the heat light turns on and now it's only running at 56% power. It's not very bright and it's gonna get dimmer. So you see how the light's dimming? and now it turns off again. So it's one of those things where I personally would not suggest using the dimming mode with a heat light as a heat source. In my honest opinion, I try to only use thermostats for products like heat pads. I'm gonna turn this light off here. Heat pads, heat tape, you can use a heat cable. I know that's a pretty popular heat source, so you would plug the heat cable into the thermostat and then the majority of this cable heats up. People will wrap it around like in the vision racks and whatnot. This is the Zoomed heat cable. Another thing that you can use the pulse proportional thermostats for is say like a ceramic heat emitter. This is just a 200 watt Zilla ceramic heater. But again, there's no light. So this can turn on and off and it's gonna regulate the heat of your enclosure, but it will not bother your reptile with a light just turning on and off overhead. So with that in mind, one last thing I want to get to is troubleshooting with your heat source. The reality is, is with the VE products, and this goes for the herb stats too. Like, let me, again, I want to get my bias out of the way here. When it comes to setting up both brands, sometimes it'll tell you that it is applying heat. Say you're running the dimming section and it's adding 100% power, but your heat source is not working. You either have a faulty heat source, so you'll want to check that. You can see I have multiple heat sources that I could plug in to make sure that the thermostat is working. However, if you are finding that you're plugging in a brand spanking new heat mat or a ceramic heat emitter and it is not working, you may have blown the fuse. This just happens. Now, what do you do? For starters, unplug your heat source and unplug the thermostat. This is where your fuse is stored. Take a flathead screwdriver, get it in there, and you pop it up. So this is your fuse box. You can see this is the fuse to the thermostat, right? And they are actually kind enough to give you a spare. You can buy more fuses on their website to my knowledge. And if you find that they are out of stock, give Reptile Basics a call or email them and I'm sure they'll take care of you. But again, because of what I said at the start of the video with the website, make sure you go to the Reptile Basics website. So when you've replaced the fuse with one that's working, let me get the camera in focus here. You literally just pop it back in and you are set and ready to go. So I unplug the thermostat just because when I'm messing around with the fuse, you never wanna have any electricity th flowing through the product. And that there is the basic setup of a VE200 thermostat by Reptile Basics. As you can see, since I unplugged it, it reset my clock. So if you like the video, feel free to leave a like. If you have any questions about this thermostat, feel free to leave a comment below. And until then, I'm Alex with Alex's Agamids. I'll see you in the next video. Adios.